Hey everyone, horses are one of my favourite subjects to draw but I don't get commissioned to do very many so just before Christmas when I got a few horse commissions coming and I got my very first two horse drawings as well that were in the white charcoal on black paper technique and one just happened to be a black horse and one just happened to be a white horse yeah I know they call them grey but I'm going to call it white for the sake of video I decided that I needed to record them both and do a comparison video so first up is black horse and like with any black subject it's just a case of drawing in areas where there's reflected light. All areas where there's no reflected light you just leave it black and let the paper do all the job for you so there's less work to do but at the same time it makes them look more dynamic and it really sets them off in this technique I think. So I'm just adding the layers to this horse, I've just added the first layer just adding in the highlights where the lights reflecting off various parts of the horse and then I just go over that with a blending stump and then I come in with a kneaded eraser and just get rid of any excess you know to get that black paper back where I need it just ended up a bit overcooked when I used that blending stump which usually happens you just come back in with a kneaded eraser and just get rid of it a little bit again where you need to get rid of it and then when that's done you just come back in with more white charcoal and just start refining them highlights a little bit more again and I might just use small amounts of black charcoal just to get some of them tiny details where you can't really get it with a kneaded eraser. This particular horse was side lit from both sides. The main light source were coming from the screen left. So I think that was some light coming through window in its stable, its stall, whatever it were that it were in. And then it had some artificial light that were a bit warmer but more dim coming from the screen right. But I don't want to I don't want to emphasise that too much because I don't want to make the horse too flat, so to speak. So I want one side of the horse a little bit darker than the other side because it just makes it stand out a little bit more and look a little bit more dynamic. This portrait is A3 size, which is approximately 16 by 12 for them people who are not really familiar with international standard ISO paper sizes. So what that means is that I can add a little bit more detail into this portrait because you find that with charcoal, the smaller you go, the less easy it is to put quite a lot of detail in because it's been a quite soft medium. What I really would like is to get another horse acrylic painting commission where I can really get stuck into some fine details and what have you. But I'm probably just going to have to wait for me painting commissions to run out and just do it an horse painting just for myself because I just can't see it happening. For years now I've just never managed to get one. And I know on this channel it's nearly all dogs that you see me doing tutorials on but it's because I'm having to use commissions to do the tutorials and dogs is all I'm ever asked to do. So when I did get a couple of horse orders I decided I would definitely want to record them and find an excuse to put them on here. <laughs> If and when I can get a little bit more into teaching side of things then I will definitely be doing more things like horses and animals other than dogs even though as much as I love doing dogs it is nice to do some else as well. So here it is all done and I really like how this one turned out and clients loved it as well so let's move on to the next one. So here we have a white horse and my silly phone decided it weren't going to record even though I pressed record and luckily I did check after a couple of minutes and realised it weren't recording so I pressed record quick so I missed just that bit at the beginning off but it don't really matter because it weren't that much but here I am just adding first layer and unlike the black horse I'm having to literally just cover nearly all that black paper up because there's just not really many parts on this horse that are in shadow and dark enough you know for that paper to be able to depict that area. When the photo for this one were taken it were obvious that the sun were behind the photographer so it's hitting horse head on so all the horse's face is just lit up by bright sun in fact I even had to darken the reference photo in photoshop a little bit just to get a little bit of detail back because it had been blown out a little bit because everything else in, in photograph were a bit darker and then the horse were the only white thing in photograph so it was just blown out compared to everything else. Like with that black horse portrait I just go through the same process just adding the layer on and then blending it with a blending stump and then just bringing your needed eraser in and getting rid of any that just needs to be toned back down again. But obviously I don't need to use needed eraser as much in this one because <laughs> most of it is actually just white. It obviously uses a lot more charcoal pencil. I think for a white horse or any white subject lit like this, it's probably a 50-50 split as to whether you want to draw them on toned paper or on black paper. 
because it don't really make that much difference. I think on black paper they probably are going to stand out a little bit more because it's, you know, it's the complete contrast that black paper is. There's a white, white animal, you know, the white subject. So it's going to stand out a little bit more on black paper, but it could work equally well on toned paper. I think if the horse were lit a little bit differently, say it were lit from side or from back, especially from back, then it probably would suit the white on black more than on the toned paper because then you, you're working with a lot more contrasts and you're going to have a lot more of the horse that's in shadow. So it's going to be a lot darker than the bits that have been hit directly by bright light. But you'd still see plenty of detail in shadowed areas with it being a pale coloured animal, but then the highlights would really stand out and have some real punch to them. So this portrait is A4 size, which is half the size of A3, which is what that black horse was, and that is um, approximately about 8 by 11 or 12 inch. It's basically standard printing paper size or letter size, which probably gets used all over the world, to be fair. Being a bit smaller means that there's probably not quite as much detail in this one as other ones, so it's not the absolute perfect 100% comparison but they still provide a good comparison to doing a black subject on black paper and a white subject on black paper. So I'm approaching the end of this horse now and I'm really having to go at it with them white tones. Both of these horses were wearing clunky head collars so I had to sort of improvise as to what were going on underneath all them thick straps. Downside to horse portraits, especially when they're secret drawings like gifts for people and people having them done have just got to try and find what photos they can without being able to get any themselves. So I'm just adding final touches to this horse now and it turned out pretty nice and this is the final picture. Let me know in comments which one you'll prefer and if you're new to this channel and you want to see more videos like this then please subscribe and hit like on the video and I think that's going to be it for now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!